Hey, it's me, Mustang Rebuilder. Hmm, this is uh, going coming up on week three of after my surgery. Yesterday and day before is my first day being able to get out of the house, walk around, and you know, yeah, walk like an old man. But then again, I am an old man. But I'm, you know, what I'm talking about. But no cane, no nothing, just on my own. Every now and then in the snow, I had my brother. You know, he's next to me to give me some support. And that's what brothers are for. Anyway. Before I start this video, I just that, some people never see this because some people don't watch the videos all the way through. Okay, at the end of the video, it is always a contest. Okay, for stickers. Okay, and it's the, these are my newer ones, and it's my saying: Remember, if you're not learning something new every day, you must be dead. So hang around to the end. And I'll, I'll give you a question or how to win. First two people answer the question right, get the sticker. All right. So hey. I'm not going to make this a long video, but this is a topic I see come up on the internet a lot or in forums or on Facebook and stuff like that on which teeth are best for your stump grinder. Guys that are in the industry, you know, a lot of guys are prejudiced because they use, you know, they, they're brand loyal. It's kind of like, you know, Ford's the best, Chevy's the best, no, 426 Hemi and Chrysler's the best, you know, everybody's got their favorite. Okay, but I'm going to tell you the two main differences, and I've run a lot. I've been in the business a long time, so I've been. I, I'm going to explain to you. Okay, in the industry, the two best teeth that I find. Oh, you throw a rock at me. This is me, and I've been through a lot of them. Okay, and I'll give you the reasons why. Okay, green teeth. I run them on my machine, and my brother runs them on his machine. Okay, I like it because I can sharpen them easy, and I can send them out and be retipped. Okay, and then I buy them straight from Green Teeth Manufacturing, a guy named Chris Peters. I order them, I got them, bam, there's no questions, even though. Now, some of you are going to say, well, how, how do you know you all you run is Green Teeth? You wouldn't know about anything else. I will tell you this. On Green Teeth, I like them because of my area. The area I'm grinding in is most, mostly soil. And, you know, every now and then I will hit some concrete or rock or something like everybody does, you know. But I'm mostly soil here. And um, I also had 2550 diesel, which now my buddy runs it. I sold it to him. It has it was one of the first to have the new river design teeth. I was one of the first ones. The, the bandit put those wheels on there. The bandit was saying it was theirs, you know, until finally it came out. New river, you know, was making them, which is actually, if you go a deep con you know, deep digging or deep phone calling like I always did, found out they're basically, they're Sandvik, okay? Sandvik is a company that's been making mining teeth for grinding out rock and mining and all for years, okay? And that wheel was on my other machine. And yes, those teeth are extremely strong. If you're in a rocky environment, you know, I would run a new river. But here's the negative part about a new river, okay? Or the Sandvik wheel type deal. Those wheels are extremely heavy. I also had a 2450 or whatever. I sold it. It's a it was the hydraulic head 25 horse, 27 horsepower bandit, okay? And it came with that wheel also. I didn't want that wheel, but that's what the dealer had, so I bought it. Well, that wheel is, was too heavy for that horsepower machine but now they've come out with a new one and i'll see if i grab a picture and put it in here for a link for you i think it's called a light l-i-t-e new river light basically they took some teeth off and lightened up the wheel for a lower horsepower machine so if you have a 27 horsepower machine and you're let's say um, grinding in a rocky environment I recommend them. I, I, those teeth are very strong. Oscar, my buddy that bought the other machine, that's what he runs on his. He loves them. On his newer bandit that he operates, also has the green teeth. He's not as experienced in the green teeth because he's always been, you know, I've always supported him with the, the new river teeth. And they last him a long time. Even that wheel has come through some, um, how should you say, um, innovations. They put wear pads on them now, okay? They would weld up this area uh, 
around certain sections of the wheel because they were wearing there. Okay, even you know you my green tea my bandit wheel wears and you've seen videos I have that how I repair them. Okay, so they put pads wear pads on them to keep them from wearing. So yes, both of those two wheels of companies are fantastic companies. All right. There's some other companies. Years ago when I had a 252, let me tell you how long I've been doing this. Vermeer and originally they had their pro teeth where you know it was the whole pocket and the tooth were all on one. And you know, whole life it was a pain in the out in the field, pain in the neck to break those big the big hex bolts out. And um then changed the whole pocket. And it was, you know, it was expensive too, because you had to pay for a pocket and a tooth. Rayco has what they call a super tooth, you know. I'm not a Rayco guy. Not because I have anything against Rayco. It's just because I didn't have any dealer support here at that time. So I've always been a Vermeer or a Bandit guy. That's just me. Sorry, you know. Uh, Carlton's been using a Sandvik wheel. Now they use the New River. And they've been Sandvik and forever, a long time ago. That's where I first learned about it. Another fellow in Grand Stumps here had a 7012, I think. Forgive me, I'm not a Carlton guy. But it was a wheeled machine, two-wheel drive, about 60 horsepower, 60 horsepower, a Deutz diesel machine. He still has it. He's had it forever, 15 years or so. And that's what he runs. Okay, he runs uh, the Sandvik wheel and all, and he's happy with it. And, and, and for him, it works. For me, I've been running green teeth so long, I have so many. You know, when they finally where I can't do anything with them, yeah, I, do, I toss them after that. But... Uh, you know, I, I like something. I, I'm stuck to it. But when I had a 252 Vermeer, let me go back. When they had the, the Vermeer teeth. Later on, before they came out with their what's called the yellow jacket, which are two-sided. Similar to a green, uh, green tooth, but it's a two-sided. Before they came out with that, I switched over to another wheel. And it was made by a company called Alpine. Alpine Machine. Okay. And now that company has evolved. And I think think they may also make the alpine magnum small stump grinder that's off for a chainsaw but it was a design that came from england and it had uh two teeth in the front and two on the side and a one bolt in the center you can remove the pocket and i swear when i switched over that when i had a 252 it was like i gained another five horsepower i was very happy and when it wore five seconds i pulled it out bam bam changed out four teeth at one time Eventually, they got rid of that design, and they went to what's a design called Rhino Wheel. You know what? I had a, have a guy that lives about 30, 40 miles from here, and he grinds it in a rural area there, but that's what he runs on his. It changed from a four-tooth pattern to a big hoof. That's what they had. He enjoys that wheel. He likes it. Same thing. One bolt pulls it out, you know. And I think it's a real thicker, thicker tooth and a lot of steel around it to wear from the old design to wear it, uh, it, it, it lasts. Now, Green Teeth came out with a, a pocket like that. And uh, actually, on one of my older machine, I had a 2450. Basically, it was a 45 horsepower, but it was belt driven. It was a bad design bandit that only lasted a few years out in the field of selling it. Then they went to hydraulic cutter head. That's how long I've been around. Anyway, uh, they had sent me, it came out with a new wheel that was a hexagon type thing and, and had it on it. And I was a mean, several guys around the United States were given journals to grind and mark down that lasting, how long the tooth lasts, uh, what, what area, what soil, what destroyed it, whatever. So we were testers, you know, we were like, you know, subbed out from the factory to test them. Uh, so I kind of know what I'm doing when it comes to stuff like that. Some of you might not think so, but God bless you anyway. And that's my computer light going off every now and then. That's why you see my face, you see my bone. It's got a sleep mode. Anyway, so to me, you know, you got to test out what you like, but you got to see what's available around you too. I know that green teeth are around. They've been around forever. I know Sand Vic's been around, which is new revolution. Been around forever. Those are your two main companies that have kept their designs. Now, in green teeth, I made another video about explaining to you about it. A lot of people just buy wear sharps, okay? There are three different types of green teeth. 
there's reds that are super sharp if you're grinding in a sandy area like and you're doing pines or if you're in louisiana or somewhere and sandy and you're doing um or even in florida you're doing some kind of soft that sharp tooth cuts it like a razor okay then there's the original green tooth okay which doesn't have a sh as sharp of an edge but it's the one they first came out with it's a very strong carbide on it okay then they had the wear sharp that's supposed to keep sharp out, you know, wearing down. They tend to, if you hit a rock wear, they tend to explode a little more, chip off, let's just say. So a lot of you guys that are saying, oh, these green teeth suck or whatever. It may be because you're running a tooth that you could improve on by maybe going to the old design if it's a little rocky or, you know, or, or if you you really want to sharp and buzz through some stuff you could buy some reds like me when i get them retipped i go with this that one company uh i have a video on it and winsome and you look back through my videos you'll find it they only do the old designs they put the original greens if you want or the reds and not, i mix them up half and half i put the reds on my leads and my recessed ones are a little further back i put my greens anyway so now you know a little bit about teeth and your machines and all. And you might go around, you know, and, 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 and talk to guys. Some guys still like the Rayco teeth that's still, you know, Rayco Pros. I don't like it. I want to change a whole pocket and, and a tooth on there. I want to just rotate a tooth, okay? And the Sandvik teeth are very, very, very freaking strong. They are. I think in the time that I used to run that remote control machine... Or my smaller machine, too, that had it. I may have broke only one or two teeth. And I used to only take that machine to, like, rocky areas that I didn't want to really do grinding. But I would take it there. Okay? Or if I was at a construction site, old site that had a lot of bricks and crap like that. That's the wheel I would take there. And, um... So, now you know a little bit about the differences and the major industry of teeth. And what's out there. You can go through and just type in the internet and go, or some trade magazines, you'll see advertisements and stuff. There's another company called uh, Lombardier, or Leonardier, Leonardier, I'm sorry. They're very similar to the Sandvik, but they have a, a flatter type tooth with all stuff. Uh, yes and no, I've heard some positives and some negatives on it. I tend to stay with some old proven designs okay a lot of guys have tried all kinds of ways to grind stumps with coming up with new technology of teeth and you know sometimes uh sometimes it works sometimes it don't sometimes they never ask us the stump grinders they never ask us what's working out there engineers are like oh this will work better you know we've proven it and test it did they bring it to us that's why i'm kind of proud of green teeth they brought it to us and sandvik and you know new new evolution they have a long history of mining and making carbide and designing teeth to grind through rocks. Some guys think it's a stump grinder and driving down the road. Look at that wheel. It's like six foot tall. It's a stump grinder, isn't it? I look at a guy who goes, stump grinder? Yeah, it's, it's a trencher for me for rocking, for, for going through late and going through carving, cutting through rock to lay cables and down or, or lay, or, or lay water lines, gas lines and you know. Some people don't really know what they're talking about, but, you know, we'll keep that between us. Anyway, as far as the question, hey, you know what? I'm not going to ask you a question to win the sticker. First two people to respond in a positive comment about it and talk about teeth on this. Tell me what you're running, all right? And, and you know what? Some of you don't know that, you know, you can go back and look. There's some old old designs of like one long piece of steel with a piece of cardboard on it teeth have come a long way all right so this is open to anyone in the world remember first two people answer the question which there is no question all you got to do this time is make a comment about teeth if you're a stump grinding yourself tell me what you're running just tell me hey adam i'm running this on my machine I like it, or hey, is there something else? Help everybody out, you know? And um, also, if you got a video of you grinding, okay, do me a favor. A short little video. I mean, you know, I'm talking like three minutes or something like that, or, or, or less. Three minutes or less. 
of you grinding or you're just getting into business or whatever, send me a clip. Send it to me to mustangrebuilder at gmail.com. And I'll place it. You know what? I'll put you in, in a little clip in, in, in every video that comes up. Okay? Or if you're a Mustang guy or a car guy building something, same thing. If you're building a car, send me a short clip of what you're doing. Say, hey, what's up? This is what I'm working on. One minute or two minute deal of, hey, this is what I'm working on. And I'll put you on there. And that way you got a little claim to fame. Or you, you can tell somebody, hey, you're on YouTube too. All right? God bless you. Thank you. And you know what? It's cold as hell out there, but, you know, the snow's starting to melt. Make another video. We're going to start talking about, we're going to get going here, okay? I want you guys to put your hat on. If you're not going to be a stump guy, I don't care if you're a tree guy, long guy, whatever. We need to get, you know, a car guy that's going to make money on the side. We, I want your side hustle going this year, and I want you to go strong, and I want you to pay off debt, and I want you to be debt-free. That's the goal. Debt-free, and after you're debt-free, I'm going to show you how to freaking make money. We're going to stack it, right? You're going to have stacks of money, and I want you to have stacks of money. That way, when the time comes, when you're getting older like me and you can't physically do it anymore, you can sit back and I'll show you how money comes into your pocket. It's not complicated. It's not complicated, all right? Some of you guys are very scared about thinking about, oh, I'm not a stockbroker or whatever. Really, it's pretty damn easy, okay? It, and you can hire professionals to do it that cost you this much, zero. All right, so first thing, we're going to pay off debt this year, right? We're not going to go in a hawk for some gigantic machines or crap like that. If you already have a machine, you got a loan on it, you know what you're going to do? This year, you're going to focus on paying that freaking machine off, okay? Use whatever skills you got to do. And you know, if, this, if you got a high loan on it, a high interest rate on that machine, or a piece of equipment, if you're a tree guy, a chipper or whatever, and the Small Business Administration gets some kind of grant or cheaper loan again, jump on it. Take the cheaper loan, pay off the higher interest one, and then pile down, jump on that loan, and knock it out. I don't want you having loans, okay? I don't have any loans on any equipment. I don't even have a loan on my big-ass house, okay? Anyway, God bless you. See you on the next one, okay, guys?